don't have a guitar. I watched a few Americans on YouTube and it appears you have to piss about at the beginning of the video before you get into the content. Anyway, back to the car, start again. Hi guys, welcome to the channel. This is my 1992 Nissan 300ZX Twin Turbo. It's purple, it's been raining. Let me show you around the car. Firstly this here, that's a shit number plate, that's a get yourself an MOT number plate, we're going to sort that out. So the bumper that I have is a KBD bumper, it is polyurethane, and the only problem with polyurethane is it's flexible. I did paint this bumper, I did test fit it, and then when I fitted it, it had sagged a bit. So what we plan to do in the future is to put some metal brackets in here to bring this out flat. The colour of the car is in fact a Chrysler colour. This is Chrysler Plum Crazy Purple. With a little bit of extra flake in it. Car's not long been painted, so I am in the process of uh, flattening it down and then buffing it up. Bonnet, this has been done. The doors, we've done these. Done the rear quarters, but I've still got to do the spoiler, the bumper side skirts and the wings currently have done 1500 sand grit and on the two and a half grit we'll be buffing these in the very near future and the bumper also needs some uh, cutting and buffing so the rear bumper on this car is a veil side possibly a replica it came with the car and it's all still a bit on the small side i do plan on updating the exhaust in the near future, take the cats out, put a three inch straight through pipe. The spoiler on this car here is a 326 power wing. These are meant for the S13s, the 200 SXs, but I did some uh, body work and made it custom fit onto the 300 ZX. I, um, when I first got the car, it came with some Ferrari style rear lights little circle ones and they didn't fit and they leaked and this panel here as well was non-existent because that was built into the ferrari light panel so i've replaced it with the center panel the 99 spec rear lights and this panel here from z center these panels are rather difficult to fit as well i had to drill some extra holes then square them out test fit it take it on off a few times and uh, well, I did that. Side skirts, I believe, are a Veil Side version 2 replica. And these vents here, I put these myself into the wings. I originally brought some uh, fiberglass wings, vented wings from the Z Center, but then I decided it was better to repair the steel wings because these had rotted at the bottom. So we welded a new piece on the bottom and made it fit to the new sills. And then I cut this out folded it back and welded a piece in here and a piece in here, bit of body filler, bit of blocking and then paint it. When I first got this car, I thought I'd just paint the car, put some wheels on it and that'll be it. But I took the side skirts off and I found out 
that the outer seals here had a hole in it. Have a look inside there. And it turns out the whole seal was rotted and the inner seals are gone on the seal returns in here. It's a common thing on the 300ZX because on the 300ZX you have a T-top and in here there is a drain that runs all the way around here, gutter, sorry. And then there's a drain hole here which will go down the A-pillar in a pipe and it flicks out just round here behind the wing and sometimes these pipes shrink and they come off and then it flicks out in here and it leaks into your inner sill and rots your sill out and then on this side you have another drain gutter for this end this goes down the B pillar here and then Nissan had this really clever idea that it will go into the inner sill and then from the inner cell it will roll into a gutter and then out of the gutter to the bottom of the car however over 30 years this will rot away your inner cell and then you will need a new one so what i've done is i've rerouted because under the uh, under these back seats here there is actually an inspection hole here or just under here where you can take a piece of tape off and you can inspect the gutter so I have rerouted the pipe so that it comes down here and it comes out where the seat belt is here, next to the seat belt, under some bits and pieces here. So it's all covered by the trim and straight out the bottom of the car. So no more rotting. You may also notice I have a child seat in the car. So this is a family car. This is the only child seat what does fit in the car. There is another video I've done on this if you'd like to go and watch that. So the interior on this car is a leather interior. I believe this is a UK car. Seats have gone here. I would like to retrim this at some point. The dashboard is in fairly good nick. So I think I'm just going to leave that. However, the door cards, as you'll see, are a little on the manky side. You see better on here. So I plan in the future to retrim this. We'll make a video on that as well. And this gear knob here is a special type of gear knob because it adjusts to your position wherever you're sat it doesn't matter what angle your hand is at the gear stick is just right for you also the interior light well it's a little piece of plastic snapped off that so that that doesn't stay up so now we'll get in and we will start the car up yep the keys my key, proper fridge is its key. See this? Well, that's fell off because everything in a Nissan 300 ZX falls off, including that bit of trim there for the tires to top. So, there's, there's a unique way to close the door on my car. You have to start the engine, you have to put the window down, and you have to pull the door in an upwards direction and then put your hand out the window just check that it's shut properly before putting the window up before putting the window up so if we look at uh, the heater you'll notice it is minus 33 degrees outside my particular heater has a random temperature every time you start the car if our temperature is randomly more than the temp you set it at it won't work down here i have got my boost gauge and sometimes like today that works other times it doesn't work but the turbos still work down here i've got a little light to tell you that i'm out of screen wash although i am not and if i move forwards in the car the ABS light will come on, although my brakes are perfectly fine and my ABS is perfectly fine. This is an aftermarket steering wheel that I have fitted with a horn that doesn't work at the moment, but it will work in the future. So technically the reason the door isn't shutting properly is it needs to come up a little bit here 
on the alignment of the door. But you need, in order to do that, I need to remove the side skirt so that I can take off the wing. I had to take the wing off, I need to take off the bumper. Well, my wings, the normal wings, they come with a couple of studs here. My wings, they fell off, so I drew some holes. If I just put some nut and bolts through, that'll be easy. If you put a bolt in there, and you try to put that on, the bolt falls back out the back. Now, you can't get that bolt back in on this side if the headlight's in the car, unless you've got very, very tiny fingers. So I'm really not looking forward to taking the bumper off again. In fact, I may just weld them in, but then that might burn the paint. So I think I'll probably just super glue those so I can get the bumper back on. But that'll be when I've made me brackets for in here and a bracket for in here. So now let's take a look in the boot. Or the trunk if you're American. Oh yeah, I don't have a lever here because I don't have a cable because it's snapped. But not to worry. I can get in with the keys. So we turn this. And this is a very heavy boot. And you don't want to pull here because this 100 pound piece of plastic tack will fall off and snap like it has there. So you just get the corner here and you lift it up here. And you will see my boot is very busy at the moment. So these here. They go there. When I paint the car, obviously I'll strip it out. The plan was to put these back in. However, after putting the rear seats in, the trims in the side there, the seat belts, the back of the seat, I discovered that there's a bolt on the bottom of that. What well, goes underneath all of that? So basically all of that lot's got to come out so I can put that and that back in. But when I've put that and that back in, I've also got the boards to go down here, the original carpet. I do plan to paint this first and then put the boards and the carpet back in. And then I eventually plan to create some sub enclosures, which will sit. If we put that there, somewhere like that, they will sit across here at an angle here, a 10 or a 12 either side. And then I'm going to build a box in the middle here for all the amps. Yep, shouldn't have parked there. So, back inside the car. I also plan to get a double DIN. You can get a double DIN system from the States. Uh, oh yeah, you've just noticed that down there. That's my fibre microfiber towel this car here you get a lot of condensation on the windscreen and on the targers so it's good to keep a microfiber just for getting rid of that when you get in the car first thing in the morning anyway double din stereo here from the states comes with the brackets and i plan to get a double din stereo which in the fascia and uh with android auto sat nav uh, Spotify, all that fancy stuff. Connect that to the amplifiers, which are going to go in the back, in the boot, and a couple of subwoofers either side in the boot. Then going to put some uh, new speakers in here because at the moment there's no speakers in there because I can't find the screws to put the um, mounting brackets back in. But they are somewhere in my house, conservatory, kitchen, bedroom, wherever. I will find them. So when I've got a new stereo system fitted, I will also make an installation video for that. So time to take a quick look under the under the bonnet hood, if you're American. Sorry, I called the boot and the hood earlier. If you're American, no, it's not. It's a, uh, I think it's a hood lid or something like that. Trunk, don't know, don't really care. Right, so a little release here. I've got a headlight panel here as well. This bumper, in fact, the KBD bumper, is a copy of the Stillen bumper. Uh, you can also get a fiberglass version from the Z Center. This, I believe, is a copy of a Stillen um, nose panel. So if we put this up, and we find this, it will go in there somewhere, like so. 
So this here is the VGD TT30 or whatever it is, twin turbo, as you see the boost hoses here, V6, six cylinder, three litre. That is my aftermarket horn because the factory one, which is down here somewhere, doesn't work, as usual. Uh, down here you'll see there's some spare connectors here there for the lamber sensors they don't work either I've got some downpipes and new lamber sensors to go in but well, imagine getting those off and if we go over here and watch the mud this here is the PTU which I have tied to the engine with some cable to stop it falling off also put a new fuel filter on uh, this is the fuse box, uh, it's loose because the previous owner decided the best place for the fuse box would be underneath here, in here, in a plastic bin bag. So that was really good fun, taking it all the bits, taking all the fuses and the relays out, noting where they were, shoving it through a hole here behind the headlight, very tight, and rebuilding it back here and hoping it all worked. Anyway, the PTU should be fitted here however I don't have the bolts at the moment and also a lot of people remove them because they get hot there and they mount them inside the nose cone or on the front bar inside the bumper so I intend to mount mine on the front bar inside the bumper so when I take the bumper off to fit the brackets and to cut and buff it I'm going to feed the cable through here and I'm going to fit that on there so now let's talk about the wheels. These are Japan Racing, or JR, JR32s, they're called. I got them from Driftworks. On the front here, this is a 9.5J on an 18 offset. The wheels what came on the car were a 35 offset. They sat flush with the arch, so these poke out a little bit because 18 is obviously less than 35 and these here I have put the 235 tyres on them it's recommended the 245 is the minimum width on a 9.5J but obviously because my wheel's a bit pokey I put that on so that my tyre has some kind of slant which sort of brings it back towards the arch as you'll notice there's quite a lot of gap here anyway so in the future I do plan on getting some coilovers to lower this down which hopefully it might camber in a bit when I do that and if it doesn't, I will get some camber arms to adjust the camber slightly as well so that the wheels would be a nicer fit. On the rear, also a Japan Racing JR32, but these are a 10.5J offset is on these is a 22, so 22 mil offset. And again, I have fitted a 255 tire when a 265 tire is the recommended smallest to give it that little bit of slope because as you'll notice I've got quite a bit of poke at the moment on that mine is a twin turbo car on the twin turbo car you get an ICAS which is a rear wheel steering system on the iCash you normally have next to the power steering reservoir here some gubbins for that which then go down into some hoses which go around here, around here all the way to the back of the car to the second power steering rack for the rear wheels. These can seize up and stop working so on my particular car I have had a delete kit fitted which includes getting rid of the gubbins and if you go around to the back of the car You won't be able to see it, but I have fitted a iCast delete bar from the Z Center. So guys, that is my Nissan 32. Fuck it. So guys, that is my 1992 Z32 Nissan 300ZX twin turbo in purple. Thank you for watching, please like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff, and I will see you in the next one.
I don't want to get dumped for fly taping, do I? Also forgot to mention on my particular car, the rear driver's door doesn't lock from the outside because there's a little plastic cam and it's snapped off because that's quite common on the 300ZX. So you have to climb in for the passenger side and do that. And then climb out. And lock it from here. Other than that, it's a good car.